Data. Hi, Data. Hi, Barbo. How are you? Fine. Getting used to the village. How was your trip to Frankfurt? Very good. Heidi, run along ahead and I'll catch up with you. Okay, Aunt Data. I've been hired by a wealthy family and will work in their home. That's wonderful news. But what about Heidi? I'm taking her up to her grandfather. She'll live up on the mountain with him. The grandfather? But you know what a miserable old man he is. He never speaks to anyone when he comes to the village. Every child here is afraid of him. Miserable or not, he's her grandfather. I've taken care of Heidi ever since my sister and her husband passed away. Now it's her grandfather's turn to do his duty. <laughs> my sight for one minute and... Heidi! Heidi! What do you think you're doing? I was just... Uh, I was just playing. And where are your clothes? There they are. You left them on a rock? Oh, Heidi! Peter! Can't! Have to take the goats to the mountain! I'll give you a penny! <laughs> I must say, you can move fast when you want to, Peter. We're going to the grandfather's house. Will you walk with us? I'm going there, too. Can I play with the goats along the way? Put your clothes on first. I'm not going to carry them. Now remember what I told you about your grandfather. Okay, Aunt Detta. There he is. Hello, Grandfather. I'm Heidi. I'm coming to stay with you. Hmm. We'll see about that. What's the meaning of this, Data? Good morning, Uncle. I've brought Heidi to stay with you. I've had her for five years. It's your turn to tend the child. Turn? You there, Peter. Take your goats up into the mountains and take mine with you. I know nothing about children. She'll stay with you all the same. If you don't want her, you'll have to think about what to do with her. She's your responsibility now. Don't tell me what to do, girl. And don't tell me how to live my life. Now leave my home and don't come back. Goodbye to you, then. And goodbye to you, too, Heidi. Take care of yourself. Can I look around, Grandfather? Mm. Suit yourself. sound like they're saying to me. I wonder if they talk, too. Well? Can I see the inside of your house, Grandfather? Ah, come along. This is a very nice house. There's only one bed. Where will you sleep? Me? Why, <laughs> that's my bed. Oh, well, where will I sleep? Sleep wherever you like. I think I'll sleep up here. Look, Grandfather, I've made a bed. 
Here. It's not a proper bed without these. There. Now your bed is made. I suppose we should have some lunch now. I'll build you a high stool to sit on. How did you know Peter would be coming with the goats? He brings them down from the pasture every day at this time. Peter! Let's play! Come on over here! He's a little too busy to play. Too busy to play? I know that's hard to imagine, but he must finish his work first and take the goats to Dorfley. Are these two goats both ours? Ours? <laughs> yes, they are. The brown one is Little Bear, and this is Little Swan. Can I play with them? It's late. You'll have plenty of time to play with them tomorrow. Go, you two. To the shed with you. And as for you, off to bed. Good night, Little Bear. Good night, Little Swan. Good night, Grandfather. Good night, Heidi. Sweet dreams, Grandfather. <laughs> Heidi, you haven't finished your breakfast. But Peter's here with the goats. And I've got to see them! Fun! Peter, you're so lucky you have these friends. Friends? Gee, I never thought of them like that. Oh, the mountains are so, so... Big? Beautiful. I never really noticed, but you're right. They are beautiful. Would you like to go up to the mountains with Peter today? Up there? Really? As long as you stay with Peter. I will, I will, I promise! Peter, Here's lunch for you and Heidi. This is no lunch. This is a feast. Then earn your right to enjoy it by keeping a good eye on Heidi. Make sure she doesn't wander too close to the cliffs. You can count on me. Come on, Heidi. Those beautiful mountains are waiting for us. in the whole wide world. The goats sure know how to have a good time. Why shouldn't they? They have all the food they can eat and these mountains to play in. What's that? It's one of the goats. Her mother was sold yesterday. I guess she's crying. She must miss her. Aw, poor little thing. What's her name? Her name's Peppermint. Where are you going? Let's eat. I'm hungry. You go ahead and eat. I'll be right back. Oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. It'll be okay. I'll be your friend. Will that make you feel better? Oh, yes. We're gonna be the best of friends.
Oh, all right. Now get back to the herd! <laughs> I guess I should thank you. If you didn't wake me up, I wouldn't have seen Little Swan going over the cliff. Thanks. Peter, look at that bird! It's a robber bird. Let's go after it! You can't. It lives high up in the mountains. Even goats can't climb that high. Why does it sound like that? Who knows? Come on, I have to take the herd back down now. Let's go. <gasps> the mountains are on fire! <laughs> Heidi, sometimes you are so silly. It's just the sun setting. You mean, it looks like this every day? Almost. I wish I could stay here forever. You'd be awfully cold if you did. Now come on! Why not? Yeah! <laughs> Grandfather, why does a robber bird cry like it does? The bird cries because he's mocking people who live crowded together in the city. He knows how good life is in the mountains, and he thinks city people are foolish for living the way they do. You know what, Grandfather? I think the robber bird is right. <laughs> so do I. It's great playing with all the other children. I'd rather be with my goats. You'd have frozen goats if you tried to drive them up there. Come in, Peter. Have breakfast with us. 
I never refuse a meal. So young, yet so wise. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to feed you every day. Oh, my grandmother asked if you come down and visit us for lunch someday. We don't have much, but let's go now. No. Now? Well, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow will be great. I can't wait. Is it tomorrow yet? We've got to get through tonight first. You know, Heidi, I'm not sure about this. I don't get along with people, and people don't get along with me. But you get along with me, and Peter. Well, uh, I'll take you down there. You can visit, and I'll pick you up at nightfall. Okay, Grandfather. Hold on. Remember, I'll be back to pick you up when it gets dark. Yes, Grandfather, and thank you. Who's there? It's me, Heidi. Peter said you invited me for lunch, and I... Oh, my, yes. You're the girl Peter has told me about. Come closer, child. My, but you're a little thing. Did you come down the mountain all by yourself? My grandfather brought me. Is he here? No, but can't you see he's not? No, dear. I can't see anything. No wonder. It's too dark in here. I'll open up the curtains. It, it won't do any good, Heidi. I still won't be able to see. How about if I light some candles? You could light all the candles in the world and still I would not see. I'm blind, Heidi. You... you mean you can never see? I see in a different way. When I hear a kind word, it's like seeing a beautiful light. A friendly hand feels like the warm glow of the golden sun. Well then, a hug and a kind word is what you'll have every day. Thank you, Heidi. Grandfather, tomorrow we've got to come back and you have to bring your tools with you. Heidi, what are you talking about? Well, Peter's grandmother told me she can't sleep because her shutters rattle so badly. The roof has holes in it, and the wind whistles through the walls. But it's not our house. Please, oh please, Grandfather, we have to help her. Something told me if I came down here, I was going to end up paying for it. You mean, you'll do it? I suppose I can. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> You've got to come see the mountains with me and Peter tomorrow. They're so beautiful. You've said that every spring for the last three years. But you have to come. It's true. Uh-oh. Looks like we've got company. You're looking well. Do you remember your Aunt Detta? Yes, Aunt Detta. Uncle, I must say you've taken good care of the child. The mountain agrees with her. I bring you good news today, for both of you. I found a home for Heidi. A friend of the mistress I work for has a child who needs a companion, and of course I at once thought of Heidi. But this is my home. They live in a fine house in Frankfurt, and it will be very good for Heidi. And very good for you, no doubt. How much are they paying you? I see you haven't changed. No matter. Heidi's coming with me. She stays here. She comes with me. It's time she learned to read and write. And she's not going to do it up here surrounded by goats. 
I know what's best for Heidi. Don't make me go to the courts, Uncle. I do have papers showing that I am the legal guardian. You didn't tell me that when you left her with me. You insisted I take the child in the first place. Only until I could find her a permanent home to live in. Now I have, and now I will take her. Unless you want the police brought into this. Take her. Take her and leave my mountain. Grandfather! Let him go. Come along with me, Heidi. No, I won't. I'm staying here. Didn't you hear him? He doesn't want you here. He just said that because you made him mad. Heidi, listen to me. This is for your own good. Now get your things. We've got a train to catch. Oh, isn't she here yet, Madame Rottenmeier? I'm sure they'll be here any moment, Clara. Yes, may I help you? I'm here to deliver the girl, Heidi, to Madame Rottenmeier. Very well, you are expected. So this is the child? Yes, her name is Heidi. Very well. You will be Miss Sussman's companion. You will study with Clara, read stories to her, and... But I can't read. What? Our bargain was for a child who could read and entertain Clara. You said nothing about her being able to read. As for entertaining, you'll find her amusing enough. I leave her in your hands. Just a moment, Detta. I have further words for you. Hi, I'm Heidi. That's a pretty name. Mine's Clara. I'm sorry I can't read, but I live in the mountains. I've never had to. The mountains? You've lived in the mountains? Have you ever seen any tigers or lions? No, just goats. Well, don't worry about not being able to read. My tutor will take care of that. He talks too much, but he'll teach you to read. I hope so. I would love that. Well, let's not worry about it today. It's your first day here. I bet you're hungry. I am. I could drink five bowls of Little Swan's milk. Little Swan? Little Swan's one of my grandfather's goats. She makes the sweetest milk you've ever tasted. I'll tell you all about her. <laughs> Grandfather? Oh, I almost forgot that I'm not at home. What happened to the trees and the mountains? There's nothing to look at but houses. Maybe if I can open up the window, I can look out and see the mountains. <coughs> oh, I wish I could breathe the outside air. What kind of a place is Aunt Detta taking me to? <laughs> May I please have another one? Take the role, Heidi. You needn't ask permission. But my grandfather said you should always ask first. Well, he's not here. I am. And in the future, you will come to breakfast on time. You took a full 20 minutes to get dressed and down to the table. Madam Rottenmeier, didn't you forget? Forget what? Please. You forgot to say please. Heidi's right. I didn't hear it either. <laughs> Did you, Sebastian? You know, I didn't. Well, I... I... I need to speak with the cook. <laughs> You're right, Heidi. Good manners are important, no matter how old you are. How did you sleep last night, Heidi? The bed was nice, but the window in my room doesn't open. Well, just ask Sebastian. He'll open it for you. <laughs> this must seem very different from your home. <laughs> Tell me about Switzerland. I know you lived on a mountain. You can't imagine it, Clara. The fir trees whistle to me when the wind blows through them. And every day, I'd go up to the pasture with Peter and his goats and pick flowers. There were so many flowers. And the mountains turn red when the sun sets. And <laughs> it sounds spectacular. Oh, it is, it is. But where are you going? To show you why it took me so long to get down for breakfast. Imagine the cook asking if this new girl has any favorite meals. A kind gesture, I'd say. Kind gesture. The child will eat whatever Claire eats and be lucky for it. I've never heard of such a thing. 
should say not. Who knows what diseases they might have? Sebastian, catch these creatures and toss them out into the street. <laughs> How on earth could they have gotten into this house? I put them in, Madame Rottenmeier. You brought them into this house? Well, I heard them meowing outside my window, and I thought they'd make nice pets for Clara. So I ran down and brought them to my room before breakfast. This is the absolute end. Sebastian, after you've disposed of the animals, you will take Miss Clara up to her room. But we were just having fun. You've had quite enough fun for one day. As for you, I expect you to stay in your room all day. That is, after you've cleaned up this mess in here. Don't worry. I'll keep the kittens in my room. Maybe when Mr. Sesamon returns, we can convince him it might be nice to have some pets around the house for Clara. Oh, thank you, Sebastian! They are cute little things, aren't they? I've missed you so much, Father! And I you, Clara. My time home is to be short. I must leave for Paris tomorrow on business. But I have a few surprises for you, so let's make the most of it today. Mr. Sassman, I have a matter of great importance which I must discuss with you. Ah, but first, let's meet this young lady. You were the girl who was brought here to be my Clara's companion? Companion? I thought we were friends. Yes, that's right, Father. We are friends. Well, friends it is. That is precisely what I want to talk to you about, sir. If we could speak privately. Yes, yes. I'll only be a moment, my dear. Now, what is it, Madame Rottenmeier? Sir, I've made a terrible mistake with this girl. She cannot read, and she is having a bad effect on your daughter. Really? In what way? She's clumsy, and she behaves badly. Why, the other day I heard the two of them laughing hysterically, and that excites Clara far too much. If you'll listen to me, you'll send the girl home this very night. Sounds like it's just what Clara needed. Where are you going, sir? To speak with my daughter. So, Clara, how are you doing? Well, Father, I've never had so much fun in my life. Heidi and I laugh, and we play, and she tells me all sorts of stories. She's the best friend anyone could ever have. That goes for me, too. <laughs> then it's settled. Heidi will stay as long as she likes. You mean it? Madam Rottenmeier, from this day forth, Heidi is to be treated as you would treat my own daughter. And see to it that she has new clothes. Don't forget to say please. <laughs> please, Madam Rottenmeier. Oh, and by the way, Clara's grandmother arrives in two days, and... Grandmother? Grandmother's coming here? I told you I had a few surprises for you. Heidi, Heidi, my grandmother's coming. Oh, you'll love her. I just know you will. Oh, and one last thing. We'll have two new additions in the house. A pair of kittens. You may have new clothes, and Mr. Sessman may have told me to treat you like I do his own daughter. But remember, you are not Mrs. Sessman's granddaughter. Yes, Madam Rottenmeier. You are not to address her as Grandmama, but as Gracious Lady. Yes, Madam Rottenmeier. Good. We understand each other. Mrs. Sessiman, what a great pleasure it is to see you again. Nice of you to say so, Sebastian. Now, where is that granddaughter of mine? Here I am, Grandmama. Indeed you are. Oh. You're looking well, Mrs. Sessman. I'm looking like an old lady, Rottenmeier, since that's what I am. But, uh, but... Uh... Oh, but nothing. I want to talk to my granddaughter. Grandmama, I want you to meet my new friend, Heidi. How nice to meet you, Heidi. It's nice to meet you too, gracious lady. <laughs> oh, my, my. 
gracious lady. Mm, there can be only one person who told you to call me that. Come now, Rottenmeyer. Confess. Well, I, I only thought the child should address you with the respect you deserve. And I do thank you so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you must call me Grandmama. Uh, I can see I'm not needed anymore, so I'll say good night. I admit I am amazed, Mrs. Sessiman. I never thought the child could be taught to read. Your problem, Rottenmeyer, is you don't believe in people. I believe one can do anything if one tries hard enough. Perhaps we can even teach you to smile. See? It's not so hard. I can put a smile on your face even when you're sad. Sebastian's right, but you must make a wish first. Then, if you close your eyes and blow out all the candles in a single breath, the wish will come true. My wish will really come true? I'm sure of it. <gasps> What's this? Open it and find out. Happy birthday, Heidi. You have been such a good friend to me. I want to give you something special. A train ticket? To Switzerland? <laughs> it's what you want most of all, isn't it, Heidi? To go home to your grandfather? But... I... I... But who will be your friend? Oh, Heidi, you will always be... Heidi, the doctors have decided Clara is well enough to go to a special school now with other children. And I'm sure the reason she's stronger is because of you. You did so much for me. I just wanted to do something for you. You will come visit me, won't you? Heidi, of course! <laughs> Clara, the clothes you gave me are so beautiful. I'm glad you like them. Remember me when you wear them. Oh, Clara, I'll never forget you! I... Well, I know you have to go, but... I'm going to miss you so much. And I'm going to miss you, too. But you are coming to visit me. When spring comes, I'll have Grandmama take me to see you. You'll love the mountains, and you'll love Grandfather, too. I 
Heidi? My Heidi? I missed you so much! And I you. To me, Grandfather. Why is he so angry? He's not angry. He's jealous. He's had your friendship to himself for many years. I think he's afraid you like Clara more than him now. But that's silly. They're both my friends. Silly or not, I think that's how he feels. Hope oh, we've got visitors. It's a wonderful place. Heidi was right. It's every bit as beautiful as she said it was. And you are all she said you were. She's a lucky girl to have you as her grandfather. I'm the lucky one. Indeed you are. We've had such a marvelous visit. Unfortunately, it's time to go. Oh, Grandmama, can't we stay just a little longer? The day went so fast. Yeah, please, Grandmama. I don't want my best friend to leave yet. Then she can stay. What? I've arranged with your grandfather to have Clara stay here with you for a few weeks while I stay down in the village. Oh, that is, if you want to. <laughs> I think that means yes. We've no choice, Clara. I'd like for you to stay, but... Without my wheelchair, I can't get around. I'll go down to the village and fetch your grandmother. I wanted Claire to see the pasture in the mountains so badly. I came all this way, and now I won't get to see it. Yes, you will. I'll leave you both up in the pasture, then go get your grandmother. At least you'll have a few hours to spend up there. I shouldn't be too long. Enjoy yourselves. I'll never forget this day as long as I live. You are right, Heidi. This is the most beautiful place in the world. The meadow's even more beautiful. It's filled with flowers. Oh, I wish I could see it. Maybe you can't see it, but I can bring some flowers to you. I'll be back. Your goats have more sense than you do. I've forgiven him, Heidi. Can't you? I'll do anything to make up for it. Anything? Anything. Good. You can help me get Claire to the meadow. 
We'll help her walk there. Oh, Heidi, I don't think so. We can do it. Just wrap one arm around my shoulder and the other around Peter's. <laughs> I, I can't do it. Yes, you can. You have to try, Clara. I am, but... Then stop saying but and just believe. Remember what Grandma Ma says. If you believe, anything can happen. I'm... I'm doing it! I'm walking! I'm really walking! Yes, you are, Clara! Now wait for us! <laughs> I don't understand it. This is where I left them. But where can they be? I... I don't know. Un unless... No. She couldn't. They couldn't. Wait for me! Oh, she's walking. My Clara is walking. Grandmama! Clara! in the world. Start with a smile, let it spread from here. 